Welcome back to Experience Points, a show in which I talk about things a little less formally, a little more casually, and today we're talking about not an RPG, but a movie that was made from an RPG. We're talking about Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days in the HD collections of uh, either 1.5 HD Remix for PlayStation 3 or the story so far on Kingdom Hearts or on PlayStation 4. Ugh, words, guys. Can you speak them? <laughs> I sometimes can't. <laughs> so today, uh, I wanted to talk about this a little more casually because I don't really review movies and this isn't really something I do typically, uh, but a lot of you guys wanted to hear my thoughts on 358 over two days. So this is kind of my compromise, my, my intellectual compromise to allow that to happen. So I think that as a movie, 358 over two days is a really hard sell for someone who's maybe not very invested in the Kingdom Hearts series. Uh, it has a pretty good story that is a very slow burn, kind of boring at times, and the presentation within the game movie thing is pretty bad. It looks like a series of in-game cutscenes that have been stitched together by a series of uh, pages of text. So um, I guess maybe fans of Xenogears second disc would probably really, really enjoy this game <laughs> or this movie rather. Uh, but I feel that uh, for the majority of gamers out there who are maybe even fans of Kingdom Hearts, who are fans of action and and that sort of thing, uh, this has very little of that. Musically, the game is actually pretty similar to every other Kingdom Hearts games in the HD collection so far, to be completely honest. I think that's because a lot of the music was in fact recycled for the DS version of the game, and that was just sort of reused from the previous iterations of the Kingdom Hearts games into this, you know, Frankenstein of a movie. That's my hypothesis anyway. It was a very emotional story, a very interesting one. Essentially what happens for those who just need some sort of hook, this follows Roxas as he becomes a member of Organization 13 as he wakes up uh, and, and comes to be. He's kind of in a very catatonic state until he's approached and befriended by none other than Axel, aka the memorable character from Organization 13. And uh, eventually they befriend Shion, who is a, uh, a girl who also is uh, in Organization 13. And Shion plays a kind of an important role. Um, uh, and I, I can't give away really too much about this. You never really see her very much again, though. And that's really too bad. I have found myself, as I've been playing through the other games, talking about, like, where's Shion? Where's Shion? And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that... Um, you kind of need to probably watch the movie, honestly, to get the emotional tie to Shion that you probably ought to. But to go through a three-hour Titanic-length movie that has really bad production quality is, is a big ask. So I know that a lot of you guys would probably be better off actually just watching a recap on YouTube that maybe takes a fifth of that time or something, you know? But... Anyways, I don't want to take up too much of your time uh, talking about this game because, um, again, it's it's this is meant to be more of a casual conversation about it. Overall, I thought the overarching story was good, just really, really slow, and the production quality was just really bad. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think, though, that you might have better luck watching or playing through the DS version uh, with some action to help, uh, you know, a, a spoonful of sugar. It helps the medicine go down, you know, as they say. Uh, though I've also heard mixed things about the game's pacing as well. Uh, so your mileage may vary in that regard. But anyways, guys, thanks for joining me. I will be making a few more of these to cover the other movies in the uh, Kingdom Hearts, the story so far. Uh, and I think that you may be pleasantly surprised with what is to come. Uh, until next time, guys, have a good day. <laughs>